All right, here's a little follow-up to the yellow birds in topology. We'll call it the yellow birds in topology 2. And what I want to do is take this idea of these simple closed curves and just go up one level of sophistication to what's called the Mobius strip. But before I do that, I want to give you a little bit of personal history. I'm going to put up a picture of me, my first year teaching at the community college. It took me about three years at the community college to get to the point where I was comfortable with all the curriculum, all the material in calculus, statistics, things like that. And at the end of three years, I decided, okay, I'm going to try to bring in something uh, extra every Friday into class. And so what you're going to see right now is the first thing that I brought in. Many years ago, one of the first things I brought in to try to uh, kind of spice up my classes a little bit, and it's called the Mobius Strip. Mobius Strip is a one-sided piece of paper. So I've got two strips right here, and so first of all, I'm going to show you a two-sided piece of paper, and we intuitively know what a side of a piece of paper is and what an edge is. So I'm going to make a loop out of this so we don't have to worry about this part right here or the bottom part. So I'm just going to take and put these two edges together to form this loop right here. And now this loop is a loop of a two-sided piece of paper. It's got this side, the outside you might say, and the inside, and it's got this edge and this edge. But in mathematics, we like to pay attention to definitions and really decide what we're talking about when we talk about a side and an edge. So one of the things about a side of this loop right here is that I can write all over this side right here and I can't get to the other side without crossing the edge. Similar to my simple closed curve where I can't go from inside to outside without crossing that boundary. So um, on this piece of paper, I'm going to show you that I can't go from this side to this side without crossing an edge. So let me just write here. Maybe I'll start on the inside. I'm going to start right here, and I'm just going to write on this loop. And you see I'm never crossing an edge. I'm simply going through the whole thing until I end up right where I started with. I've drawn really all over this side. You can think of this as a paintbrush. Maybe I'm just drawing all over that side. But I've, I can't draw on the other side without crossing this edge right here. Now, what do we mean by an edge? Well, this has two edges, this edge and this edge. And what, one of the properties that edges have, if there's two of them, if I cut between them, I'm going to cut the piece of paper in half. So let's do that. I'm just going to make a little hole right here and go in and cut between the two edges. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'll go all the way around this loop and cut between the two edges until I get back where I started from, which is right here. And sure enough, if I cut that last little piece, I end up with two pieces of paper. So if I have two sides, I can't get from one side to the other side without crossing an edge. And if I have two edges, I can cut between them and get two pieces of paper. So that was a two-sided, two-edged piece of paper. Now what I want to do is take another strip of paper and this time, instead of just connecting the edges like this, I'm going to put a half turn in it and connect the edges like this. And what I end up with is a one-sided piece of paper that has only one edge. So this side right here and this side right here are exactly the same side. From this point to this point is just further along that side. And this edge and this edge are exactly the same thing. This point on this edge is just farther along than this point on this edge right here. So let me start by showing you that I can draw all over this one side without ever crossing an edge. So let's go to the board and I'll start drawing on this right here. And so I'm just going to keep drawing. I'm never crossing an edge. You can think of this as a paintbrush and I'm just going across the whole thing coloring in this side as I go, and sure enough, sooner or later, <laughs> I end up right back where I started from, and I've colored all over the whole thing without ever crossing an edge. So that's because this has only one side to it, and I've just colored on that side. Now the second thing 
is that this has only one edge. So if I think it has two edges, if I cut between those two edges, I'll end up with two pieces of paper. So let's do that. So I'll make that cut and I'll just start cutting. If you think it has two edges, then you think I'm cutting between the two edges. But it has only one edge, so actually what I'm doing is just cutting next to that one edge. So I'll just keep going here until I end up right back where I started from, make that last cut. And so if I cut between the two edges, I get two separate pieces of paper. But I cut alongside the one edge, and so what I end up with is just one piece of paper like this. I've cut next to that one edge, so I haven't cut this thing in half. So there's a look at a one-sided piece of paper. We call it a Mobius strip. You might say, well, what does this got to do with me? Well, a uh, Mobius strip's kind of a nice design, so you'll see them sometimes in designs on packaging, things like that. If you do a little search on the internet for Mobius strip and look at all the images that come up, you'll see a lot of really interesting things. Also, in the 1950s, the B.F. Goodrich company patented a conveyor belt that was a Mobius strip because they thought by making that one twist and having one long side instead of two shorter sides, they would cut down on the wear on their conveyor belts. So in any case, there's a follow-up to the Yellow Birds Topology 2 and one of my favorite little applications in mathematics, the Mobius strip.